For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word? You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Embrace the love the cross requires. Cling to the one who's Practical biblical truths is what we're going to look at today. Practical biblical truths. Open your Bible with me to Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 7 is where we begin today. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 7. The Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Notice I said open your Bibles first. I tell you, if you go to a church where nobody's carrying a Bible, it worries me. If you go to a church and nobody's got their own copy of the Word of God that they're bringing in and out of church and and going home with, it worries me. You know why? Because I want to see it with my own eyes, what God's Word says. And I love that about our church. And I love that about every church that does that, that stands up and says, open your Bible, amen? Because that man wants you to see what God Almighty has said in writing so you can see it for yourself. Can you imagine a soldier going into battle and leaving his weapon at home and saying, well, I know what it, I know all about it. I don't really have to carry it with me. No. He would have it with him. The Bible is a sword is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts to the to the joint, to the marrow, to the bone, the Bible says. So I love that. So if you're going to a church where nobody's carrying a Bible, please be careful. Please make sure you're where God wants you to be. And so in this verse, the Bible says the fear of the Lord. Now hold on. Isn't God love? Isn't God love and 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 kindness and goodness and mercy. Yes, God is all those things, but he's also much more. God is holy and justice and righteous. Amen. And so fear, let me ask you a question. What keeps you from putting your hand in the fire? What keeps you from sticking your finger in the light socket? What keeps you from dropping a hairdryer in the bathtub with you? Well, you don't stick your hand in the fire because you have the fear of getting burnt. That fear saves you some pain. That fear keeps you from sticking your finger in a light socket because you know it's going to shock you and you know it's going to hurt you. And so that fear is a healthy, good fear. That fear actually protects you. So listen to what the verse says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You see, the fear of the Lord is the attitude of the heart, of what your heart is, what's your attitude toward God. Amen? We must trust Him fully and completely. And when you stand in awe of how big, how mighty, how powerful, how holy, how just, how righteous God truly is, The Bible says that you are just starting to be getting a fear of the Lord. You're starting to realize just how big and holy and righteous and God truly is. But God, just like that fear that keeps you from putting your hand in the fire. See, that's a good fear. The fear of the Lord is a good, healthy fear. When you hate sin and you hate evil, that is a good, healthy fear. But the Bible says that fools despise wisdom and instruction. There's a verse in Proverbs that says that you can speak to a, a smart man and that's that's good as gold. He'll take that and he'll learn from it. But you could put a hundred stripes on a fool and you'll never get through to him. 
And that's exactly what the Bible's saying here. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. A fool says, I'm going to do it my way. A fool says, I can do it whatever I want, how I want, when I want, and where I want. And I'm not going to have to know, pay no consequences for it. But the truth is, ma'am or sir, you will pay all the consequences for it. You will stand before a holy and righteous and just God and give an account for your actions, the things that you've said, the things that you have done. And so the fear of the Lord, what, what is the fear of the Lord? What would the Bible say about the fear of the Lord? Because listen, the best interpretation of Scripture is Scripture itself. Amen? It's not another man's thoughts or feelings, but what does the Bible say? So turn with me now to Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse number 13. And we're going to look at what the Bible says about the fear of the Lord. And verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is this, is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. I mean, that is strong language coming from God. Because the world loves to say God is love. Well, sure he is love, but he's many more things. Now, God says, do I hate? God hates evil. God hates pride. God hates arrogancy. God hates evil. God hates a froward mouth. Somebody who is just pushy and a bully and doesn't hold back their thoughts and runs people over with their words. I'm not talking about somebody that's standing up for what's right. I'm talking about somebody pushing to get their way. A froward mouth, an evil a mouth, a mouth that spews out sewer. The Bible says, God says, do I hate. Now, men, I want you to stop and think about something here. The Bible says he hates evil. And we would all agree, yes, God hates evil. I don't even like evil. But then the very next thing that he mentioned is pride. And that is something that every man has a battle with, is pride. But I'm here to tell you, businessman, pride is the en enemy of your success. I'm here to tell you that pride will put a stumbling block in your life. Pride and arrogancy will defeat you. You will defeat your own self. If you allow yourself to be so lifted up in pride that you cannot take it when somebody says you're wrong, when somebody can't reprove you, when somebody can't even come up to you in a friendly way and say, sir, sir, you're wrong here and please let me show you why and what you should be doing. Pride will say, I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me. Don't talk to me. That's what pride will say. Pride will say, I got this. I'm here to tell you. Pride will destroy you. Pride will destroy your marriage. Pride will destroy your family. Pride will destroy your church. Pride will destroy everything that stands in its path. And the Bible says, God says in this verse, do I hate? Now, ladies can have pride too, but predominantly a man, a man can be very prideful. A man can be very arrogant. And I'm here to tell you, if arrogancy and pride is creeping into your life, oh, it'll be all right for a little while, but there will be a heavy price to pay. Your family may pay the price. Your church may pay the price. You may pay the price. But prices will be paid for pride. Pride is a destroyer of everything. Listen to me. Satan, Satan fell from heaven like a bolt of lightning because pride rose up in his heart. And as he said, I will be like the most high, I'll be like God himself. Pride. Pride is a destroyer of everything. It is, is it easy to humble yourself? Absolutely not. Is it humiliating sometimes to humble yourself? Absolutely it is. But God is pleased. And at the end of the day, do you want yourself to be pleased and the other people around you? Or do you want God to be pleased? Who are you serving? Are you serving self? Because if you're serving self, pride will always win. Arrogancy will always win. It's only when you're serving the one true living God can you conquer pride. Can you conquer arrogancy? That pride and arrogancy can be defeated. You want the best for your children? Get the pride out of your life. You want the best for your wife and for your marriage? Get the pride out of your life. Get rid of arrogancy. Actively, actively work 
at kicking those things out of your life and your heart and your mind. Because arrogancy and pride will say, what they say to me? I'll fix a show them something. Watch this. That's what pride and arrogancy will say. Humility will say, I might tell them what's wrong, but I'm going to do it in a loving way. More so than that, it's not about the other person. It's not about you. It's about God. And God will have the final say-so. God is the ultimate judge of everything that you will ever do. Everything that you ever say, everything you ever think, you will give an account for the way that you live your life. You will give an account for the way that you've raised your family. I can tell you this, when things were going wrong and I was having problems, I didn't like that. I didn't want to hear that. What do you mean I'm the man? I'm responsible for everything. But the truth is, you are and I am. If something is wrong in my home, it's my fault and I have to actively work at it. Pride will say, well, I didn't do that. That ain't my problem. Let her deal with it. I ain't doing that. But no, the truth is, God, if you're the man, you are the God-ordained leader of the home. And you are supposed to lead sacrificially like Jesus did, like Jesus loved the church. That's how you're supposed to love your wife. And the only way you can do that is if you get rid of pride and you get rid of arrogancy. And I promise you, if you will do that, your wife will see it. You won't have to say a word. You won't have to say I'm in charge or I'm the leader or I'm this or that. You won't have to say nothing. By the way, if you are saying that, you're not in charge and you're not leading. Because not a word has to be spoken about that. When you're doing what God has told you to do, your spouse will follow you and support you. Why? Because she can see that you are actively serving God. And she will get behind that. She will support that and she will support you. Amen. And ladies, the biggest thing a man wants to know that is that I'm, I'm just good enough. I'm good enough for you. I'm good enough for you. Amen. The, the thing that a man wants most out of his marriage is not love. That may be a shocker for some women, but it's not love. That's not the thing that your husband wants the most from you. It's your respect. That's what he wants most from you. That's what makes him feel loved. Now, it's different for a lady. She wants to know that she's loved. And the Bible commands that. That's me and my wife's marriage verse is Ephesians 5.33. The Bible says that the man should love the wife. And the Bible says that the wife should respect her husband. That's what it says. It says reverence. Amen. And when you live that out, man, what harmony, what, what great things happen in the home. But I tell you, if you do like this verse and you allow pride and arrogancy, evil is right behind it or evil is right there with it. Amen. So kick those things out of your life. And if you're young... You say, well, what do I look for? What, what kind of lady should I be? What kind of woman, what kind of wife should I look for? I've had many young men talk to me about that, and most of them don't know where to look or what to look for. Well, the Bible tells you what to look for in Proverbs 31. It gives you what a great, wonderful wife is. Turn over, turn your Bible to Proverbs chapter 31. Look with me now in verse 10. The Bible says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Amen. Glory to God to that. My wife is living proof of that. I love her. You couldn't put a price on her. She is priceless. Amen. Her price is far above rubies. There's nothing in the world that I would take to replace my wife. And I tell you what, listen to me, young man. Listen to me, young lady. The Bible says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Young man, you wonder what kind of girl to look for? There she is right there. Young lady, you wonder what kind of woman to be? There she is right there. And it goes on to say in verse number 11, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship that bringeth forth her food from afar. She writheth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household and portion to her maidens. This lady is not only virtuous, she's a hard worker. She's not only a hard worker, she's a business lady. She's not only a business lady, she's a godly woman. The Bible says down in verse number 25, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Amen to that. Listen to what it says, strength and honor are her clothing and here listen to me young ladies this is what it says about words that she uses in verse 26 she openeth her mouth 
with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. You want people to respect you? When you open your mouth, use words of wisdom that are wrapped with the law of kindness. Amen. People will respect that and people will reverence you. You know, because when you're spewing vomit out of your mouth, people don't respect you. And why? Because you're not respecting yourself. You're not doing what the Bible says. The Bible says, Strengthen on all her clothing, and shall re she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. That's much harder to live out than it is just to say, Boy, that's, that's wonderful what the Bible says. Is that hard to live out? Absolutely it is. But I can tell you this, it's always harder to do the right thing than it is to do what's easy. It's easy to run somebody down or blaspheme or talk bad about this or tell somebody all their problems. It's always much harder to do the right thing. It's always much harder to be positive. Don't you know that's why the news always has all kind of negative stories? Because we are naturally drawn to those things. I wish somebody would start the positive news network or something like that because you get tired of watching that. But we are drawn to that a negative Nelly, if you want to call it that. But I tell you what, when you when you talk positive, if you do what the Bible says, and when you speak with the law of kindness, and when you open your mouth, you open it with wisdom, people will be drawn to you. People will naturally, you'll be like a magnet to them. Why? Because people want that. People need that. Amen? Be that kind of person. Be that kind of lady. Be that kind of wife. Amen to that. And children... The Bible gives many commandments to children, but the one that stands out to me is in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. You mean if I do what the Bible says, and I honor my father and mother, and I, and I obey God's word, there's just an actual promise attached to that? Absolutely. That's what the Bible says. It says it's the first commandment with promise. Now, stop and think about this. If it's the first commandment with, from God with promise, how important do you think that is to God? I'd say it's extremely important because it's the first one with promise. And he gives it to you. And listen to me. There is no age limit on this. Whether you're 13 or 35 or 65, you are supposed to honor your parents, no matter how old they are, no matter what age they are. And parents, you're always a parent still as you're alive. If, you're, if your child's 60 and you're 90, you're still their parent. Amen? Exodus 20, verse 12 gives us that promise. It gives us that promise if you would live out your life. It says, is the for honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. What is the promise? It gives it to you in Exodus 20 and verse number 12. Honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Bible says, honor your father and mother. It's the first commandment with promise. Promise that your days may be long upon this land. But more so than the promise, you shouldn't be obeying it just for the promise. No, sir, no, ma'am. That's great and that's wonderful. And it's amazing when you obey God word, God's word, what he does in your life. And thank God for that promise. That is amazing. But that is not the ultimate reason you should be obeying it. You should be obeying it because God said it, even if you don't like it. I can tell you this, there's things in the Bible that I don't like. The Bible says, love your enemy. That person that's talked bad about you, run you down, beat you up, stomped on you, run you over, hurt your family, lost your job, all this. The Bible says, love your enemies. Do I like that? No, I don't like that. But do I do my best to obey it? Absolutely. Why? Because it's what God said for me to do. And I know. When I do what God said for me to do, that it is in my own best entrance. See, like forgiveness. Forgiveness is not for the other person. You're not letting that person off the hook. You're letting your own self off the hook. Because if you hold on to that anger, to that bitterness, to that malice, 
it will destroy you. It will eat you up like a cancer from the inside out. You have put yourself in a jail cell and locked the key and you'll, you can't get out. But that key of forgiveness will let you out of the prison of bitterness and malice and anger. That's the only key that'll let you out of there in forgiveness. The forgiveness is not for them. The forgiveness is for you. And God wants the best for you. That's why the Bible tells you, love your enemy. Amen? Not only that, if you love only the people that love you, if you do only good to the people that have done good to, good to you, what impact is that on the world? It makes hardly no difference. If somebody's always doing something good for me and I do something good back for them, nobody notices that. But when somebody's child gets murdered and that person goes to court and stands before a judge and the whole world on television and tells them, I forgive you. I'm a Christian. That's what I'm supposed to do. I forgive you. That gets the world's attention. That shows them what God can do in your life. Amen. And they take notice. And that has happened. Absolutely, it has happened. And it is biblical. So you want to get people's attention? Do what God said. Amen. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the key. Forgiveness sets you free. It doesn't set the other person free. And you wonder... I want to tell you with you one of our family verses, our family verse that I've chosen out of the Bible. And it's in Proverbs. I love the book of Proverbs. How can a young man cleanse his way? Get the book of Proverbs and apply it to your life. But if you look with me now in Proverbs chapter 22, Proverbs chapter 2, 22 and verse number one, the Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor than silver and gold. The Bible says a good name. You know, the Bible says that even a child is known by his doings. In a city, if there's a kid and that his certain name is said, and you can think about it yourself, you'll automatically think of somebody that has done something. And the Bible says even a child is known by their doings. Listen to me. Make sure that you're doing right. Make sure that you're doing people good. I, Lord knows before I got saved, I've done enough wrong in my life for two lifetimes and I don't want to do any more wrong. I want to do right from here on out and live a righteous life. And if I want good for my family, I've got to do what's right as the leader of the family. And I want to live out this verse. A good name is rather to be chosen that great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Did you know a, you can't buy a good name? I don't care how many billions, trillions, or anything you got, you can't buy a good name. A good name is earned. A good name is gets, you get a good name by living out a godly example. Amen. And that's what the Bible says. Don't choose all those riches. If you get them, great. But choose the good name. Choose to do what's right. Amen. In verse number two, the rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. You know one thing a rich man can't do? He can't buy one more second of life. No, sir, that's in God's hands. God is the one that makes a person's heart beat. And I've learned that about situations where I'm at and things that I'm in. And, and you know what? I said, God, you must want them here. They're here in my life and they're still kicking. They're still around. So you must want them there. Amen. And that's what the Bible says. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Make sure that you know him. Make sure you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross, that he buried, he rose again the third day, and he wants a relationship with you. He wants the best for you. He wants to give you eternal life so that you don't have to go to hell. You go to a place called heaven and spend eternity with him. Amen. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200. Thank you for tuning in to Crossbound Ministries radio broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, 
Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $10 or more, we will send you a booklet. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a pregnant woman in need of help, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There are locations in Inverness and in Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs. Located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507. That's 352-897-3507. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.